Stage Dramas present Married But Didn't Know It. This week's front page drama, Married But Didn't Know It, is a dramatization of a true life story of the same name, which appears in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly, the magazine with the greatest circulation in the world, which comes to you at no extra cost as part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. All Europe is rocking these days under political changes, and the reverberations are felt even in morality and marriage. One strange custom started by the uncertainty of the times seems to be the practice of getting married to persons who don't know about it. Marriage racketeers do a flourishing business by supplying what are known as accommodation husbands for Central European refugees who are anxious to escape from persecution in their own countries and find refuge in the democracy. The racketeer, for a certain fee, will supply a distracted refugee with a temporary husband and passport which enables the refugee to enter the haven of safety in countries where they are safe from persecution. Take the case of Harold Peters, who owned a chain of sporting goods stores in Paris. Peters is an American, and like all other foreign residents in Paris, he has to have his visa and identity cards renewed every 90 days. When he reported to the Bureau the other day, he received quite a shock when the local prefect of police challenged him. Monsieur Peters, I regret there will be some delay in the renewal of your visa and card. Your papers are not in order, monsieur. Not in order? Well, what do you mean? First, monsieur, you have failed to notify the authorities of your marriage. Marriage? Marriage? Say, what are you talking about? I'm not married. No. I'm sorry, monsieur, but we know better. In France, we have more scientific methods of keeping track of your activities than they do in America. That is why we keep this very efficient system of record. Now, look, I don't care what system of record you keep. You can't marry me without my knowing. Whether you remember getting married is your problem. But knowing you are married is no problem to the police, for we have the proof. Say, hold on. Now, let me tell you one thing. I don't drink, see? I'm not the kind that goes out on some wild party and wakes up the next morning with a headache and a wife. Besides, I haven't met anyone that I'd want to marry. And that's that. Oui, oui, monsieur. That is that. Now, here is the official record. Legal proof, monsieur. Foreign record of the government of France. Voila. Now, wait a minute. Let me see that. Voila, monsieur. There it is. Plain as day. Black and white, as you say. Well, John Peterson, you're sitting in your county sitting there. Well, that's me, all right. But who is this Fraulein uh, Muller of Vienna? She is your wife, monsieur. But I have no wife. I haven't been married. I don't even, even know this, Muller. Is that clear to you? There, monsieur, are the records. In France, monsieur, the letter determines the law. There are the records. She is legally your wife. Now, look here. I don't care what the letter of the law is. I don't care what the records say. I'm telling you I'm not married. And you and the whole French police, Army, Navy, Marines can't prove it. I am sorry, monsieur. It's going to be stubborn. But then we can take care of that. You are remanded until tomorrow, when your case will be heard again. And this time, monsieur, we will produce the final conclusive evidence. We will present your wife. That's okay with me. You produce my wife, and then I'll talk to you. Well, monsieur, report again tomorrow. And do not try to escape, or else it will be very bad for Don't you. Don't worry, I'll be here. If only to find out what kind of a wife you got me married to. The wheels of French justice were put in motion very quickly, and late that same afternoon, the gendarmes tracked down Fraulein Maria Muller, alias Mrs. Harold Peters. She was hurried to the office of the prefect of police and told the most amazing story that further complicated matters for Harold Peters. Ah, no, madame. Please be perfectly at ease. Sit down, won't you? Now, tell me your story, and I am sure we can help you. Begin at the very beginning, madame. You came from Vienna. Oui, monsieur. Oh. Just before the coup in Vienna last spring, I was fortunate enough to see the France with most of my money. I wanted to go to England to see and settle there. But the British authorities refused to issue me a visa. Oh, madame, now I begin to see what happened. This man, Monsieur Peter. Oh, no, monsieur. First, I met a married agent. He said if I paid him a fee, he would introduce me to Mr. Peter and arrange a marriage. I told the agent, he arranged everything. You married this man, Monsieur Peters, and then... I explained to him that this was to be married as a continent for me. That immediately after the marriage, he would arrange to take me to England, and we would separate at home. Ah, I understand, madame. I do not doubt you for one moment. We were married and went direct from the registry to the Gare du Nord to take a train that connected the day boat to Fortune. Yes. But at the Gare du Nord, he asked me to wait until he could the ticket. But he disappeared with my money and all my luggage. Ah, robbed you and then deserted you. Yes. Why did you not report this to the police, madame? 
I was afraid to tell the police, you see. But they would send me back to Vienna, and then I would lose everything, including my liberty. Uh, I see, madam. Although we may have to send you back eventually, I am glad to say that we have the man who married and robbed you under close surveillance. Uh, and tomorrow morning we will confront him with your accusation. Perhaps he cut all your money. Now, if you help us convict him, and the clever clique of swindlers who prey on people like you, it may be possible to allow you to remain in front. Yes, thank you. You can depend upon me to help you. Very well. Very well, madam. You will report to my office at 10 tomorrow morning. And next morning, promptly at 10, the prefect was ready to denounce the robber and swindler. He carefully set the stage for the dramatic moment. No, madam. Monsieur Peters is here. You take your place behind that screen. Remain quiet until I tell you to come out. Thank you, All right, now. Go behind the screen. Very good. John, bring in Monsieur Pidet. Say, what's the idea of treating me like a prisoner? I'll lodge a complaint with the American Embassy about this. Oh, we, oui, Monsieur, that will be very good. But for the moment, let us drop this little game of bluff. Monsieur Peters, not only do I charge you with holding vital information from the police, but I have a much more serious charge. The other day you denied all knowledge of your marriage to Fräulein Marie Muller and defied us to prove you were married. You played your part very well, monsieur. But you did not fool me for one moment. We know now why you so vigorously denied your marriage. But you wanted to cover up two other crimes. Desertion and robbery. Desertion and robbery? Say, I had a sneaking suspicion yesterday that you were a little disgraced. But now I'm dead sure. Mm. First you accused me of marrying someone I never saw, heard of, or knew existed. And now I deserted and robbed her as well. Very well played, monsieur. You are a good actor. But we will now produce the final climax of this little drama. Madame, step forward, please. Ah, voila, madame. There stands your husband, the deserter and swindler. No, 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 monsieur. This is not the man I married. No, mm. no. There you see. My husband's a taller and much more handsome. What? And I come here to be insulted on top of everything else? Quiet, monsieur, quiet. Look again, madame. Are you sure? Are you positive this is not Mr. Earl Peter, the man that married you? Oh, I'm sure it's positive. But, mon Dieu, madame, it, it must be. Oh, uh, no. All his records are exactly the same as in now. Hold on, I, I can't not understand it. The story. lady is right, and I am right. You have never even met, never mind married. But I'll say this much for you. You had the taste. But you, since you insisted on getting your wife, I'm glad you took someone as beautiful as you. Well, I'm not. In fact, if I wanted to marry you, this lady would be my type. Thank you, Mr. Yes, yes. I had a time. Yes, sir. But look, sir, we got to fix this thing. Now, I reported some months ago my home was robbed, and a great many of my personal papers were stolen. It's quite evident to me that the cook used my personal papers in this uh, marriage record. One of the gang impersonated me, married this young lady, and then robbed her. Uh, yes, yes. But of course, maybe right enough, monsieur. But first, it must be proven. Well, good Lord, isn't there proof enough? Both of us deny that marriage and everything connected with it. Uh, no, I, I am sorry, but the marriage can be annulled, monsieur. The moment we catch the clique of swindlers, but not until then. Go, go on, you mean to say we've got to stay married until you catch the real crook? That, unfortunately, is it, monsieur. But we can also get a court order of separation, two for divorce. But, monsieur, how can we separate when we have never lived together? Exactly. How the devil can we get a divorce when we've never even been married? But the record says you have, monsieur. The record, the record. Say, you talk as if you were vaccinated with a phonograph meter. I'll go to the American Council about this. Come along, Miss, uh, 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 madam, uh, Mrs., uh, uh, old Fraulein Muller. Indignantly, Mr. and Mrs., I mean Mr. Peters and his alleged wife, strode out of the prefecture and took a taxi to the American Council, who knew Harold Peters. Going over, they became better acquainted. And all the Viennese charm of Fraulein Muller began to have its effect. And in place of his gruff, abrupt indignation, Harold Peters became kind, gentle, and tender toward the helpless little refugee. At the consul's office, they told the whole story. He listened patiently and with infinite understanding. Well, Harold, it's certainly it's quite a mix-up. Now, you're telling me that the prefect is right. Uh, according to the French law, until the guilt of the missing parties is definitely established, his marriage cannot be annulled. She's legally your wife in the French Republic, as the letter determines the law. She cannot be deported, and, well, you are responsible for her welfare. Oh, no, no, monsieur, I don't know. It has all been a terrible mistake, but I do not want to have any punishment to keep her. Well, you won't be punishing me, Fraulein. You find a place to stay, and I'll see that your expenses taken care of until the case is settled. No, no, monsieur, I could not have you done. Oh, nonsense, I've got plenty. Besides, you have not anything yourself. You can't sleep in the park, it's dark. <laughs> you take my advice, Fraulein, and let Mr. Peters have his way. 
He's pretty stubborn about most things. But maybe it shall be a long time before they catch these bad men, huh? Well, don't you worry about that. In fact, let me do the worrying about everything as far as you're concerned. And a girl that can do all that you have done, I deserve a good break. Well, I'll get busy and see what I can do about getting the annulment of that marriage. But I warn you, it's going to take time and it'll be a costly procedure. All right, O'Don. In the meantime, I'll take Pauline Muller out to lunch. Then make some arrangements about a place for her to stay and some financial arrangements. Well, that luncheon was the forerunner of many more. Then there were dinners and theater parties. Friendship ripened into romance, and very soon it appeared that romance would soon be climaxed by marriage. And one evening at dinner... Well, Mary, dear, the reason I brought you here tonight is that it was here we had our first lunch, and we began to paint it. Yes, Adam, darling. We've all been so sorry, very wonderful. You haven't made me ever so happy. Yeah, I'm glad to hear you say that, Mary. It was well... Well, there's been something I wanted to ask you for the past month. What is it, dear? Just this. Don isn't having much uh, luck getting that marriage of ours in Mars. No? No, uh, these French courts and laws are so darn complicated. Oh. So, uh, I was just wondering if it wouldn't be better to call the whole thing off. You get me. But, Don, you can't be. Are we not already married? Oh, I don't mean a silver ceremony. I'm not sure the kids and find out Bob will get to find a stone from your house. And if we were married there, well, well, oh, well, Don, what do you say? You some of your favorite expressions. Okay. You really mean it, dear? Oh, oh, God, that's well. Now, what about tomorrow? Oh, there you are, Harold. Oh, good evening, Miss Muller. Good evening. Well, I've got good news for you. It's lucky your concierge knew where you were going to have for dinner. The French courts have decided in your favor. You're to appear tomorrow morning for a hearing. Sorry, Don, old boy. We can't make it. What? Now, say, look here. I've moved heaven and earth to get this thing through. You've just got to be there. Oh, there's nothing so important that you can't postpone it to get this marriage in love. Oh, yes, there is. What is it, then? To get it made legal. What? We're being married tomorrow morning, and this time, Don, for cheap. So husband and wife agreed they ought to be married. And to set all doubt at rest about the state of their affairs, they went through the religious ceremony before starting life together. The man who used the stolen passport is viewed by them both as their cupid, and neither harbors any grudge against him. Instead, the bride has withdrawn the complaint she made against him for having stolen her money. It was worth it, she says, and we are both grateful to our dishonest benefactor. You have just heard Married But Didn't Know It, a radio dramatization of a story of the same name to be found in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly, the magazine with the greatest circulation in the world, that comes to you at no extra cost as part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. Join the millions of Americans who each Sunday find the maximum of reading enjoyment in the entertaining, educational, and up-to-the-minute stories, articles, and feature fiction by the world's great writers featured in every issue of the American Weekly. The magazine distributed each Sunday with your Hearst Sunday newspaper. <laughs> Thank you.